Oh, interesting. <laughs> I like that. But yeah, you can that's put whatever good. you want back there. Oh, can I? Yeah. So that's what I got. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm not the. I'm like the plain wall, white wall. Yeah. <laughs> This whole SBA loan thing is just like turning into a complete cluster now. Um, Why? So do you know Jamie? I don't know. Do you know the name Jamie Harvey? Jamie Harvey? No, no. Now he's kind of plugged in with DC politics. He works for a great administration transition team. He has some connections with Bowser. He uh, created a company that um, got the first contract for DC HealthLink. Um, he's just someone that I've known for a while. Um, but he saw my post on LinkedIn about the challenge of getting my SBA loan. And so he reached out to his network um, to see if anybody in his network could help me get a loan. And then through that process, he found out that a bunch of people in his network haven't gotten their loans yet either. And, oh, wow. And, and banks are starting to send out emails saying, um, sorry, we don't have any money for you. And uh, you can still apply. And maybe if they give out some money the second time around, we might have something for you, but sorry. What? Yeah. Are you serious? serious? So that means they favored uh, the big uh, company. They favored their bigger clients to keep them happy. And mm -hmm. they put all the smaller ones at the end of the line. And, this and is, um, I believe that they're, they're doing, um, they're using technology as an excuse. Right. Just giving them time to filter and service the people they want to service. And then the other people they can say, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't make it. I wonder if it's mainly uh, minority-owned companies that they actually uh, allowed to kind of put at the end of the, the line. It'll be interesting at the end to see the data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but at that point, you know, it's like I said before, I mean, oh, that's great. We found out they just screwed black people all over again, but, you know, we're still screwed. Right, right. I think the small-owned businesses are going to be uh, suffering again. Yeah. But there is a second stimulus that they're working on. That much I know. Yeah, there. I saw that the you know it's like I said though you got to survive to the second one, and that's the stories you're seeing now. It's like people saying they just don't think they're going to make it. I mean, the stronger. It's it's funny because the stronger organizations who have the relationships with the banks, they'll get the money, and they could probably go longer without it. Right. As opposed to the small organizations that really need it, that don't have the banking relationships, they're not getting the money, and they're going to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be the, the triage, right? It's really the triage is the survival of the fittest yes, at this point. Again. Yeah, so, it's going to be a, a rough uh, ride. But I do, how about applying for grants? Did you, are you thinking of applying for grants? Yeah, for like this, uh, MBD, Minority Business Development Agency, is, has this grant out for um, women entrepreneurs that um, someone approaches about partnering with them on it. And so we, we um, agreed to partner with her on that. And then we're, we're starting to look for other grants. Um, we did get some leads that came in through Clearly Innovative that we're going to start to aggressively pursue. And then um, I spoke with Denise today about um, just digging up whatever was the letter or email or research that they had done previously, because they actually did start doing research for the museum. Mm -hmm. that she's going to try to dig that out. But I mean, she's been spending most of her time trying to get the paperwork together for the loans trying to find other banks that could potentially support us, um, maintain the existing relationship with our few paying clients, you know, with um, the guy from um, Fenced, um, this bar tab woman, try to keep her happy, and then also Adam. So that, For know, Namak. Yes, and try and keep some money moving through. Well, send me the, uh, the proposal and uh, let me send it out then. All let right, me send I'll, it out yeah. to, to, to a list of museums. Yeah. So no, I mean, just in the DMV area, there are a few of them. And then you have also the larger museums, uh, even the um, uh, the one in Alabama where they had a bunch of statues, where Oprah even went to walk yeah. around. Where they, yeah, you have uh, a few of them that are well-funded uh, and minority-owned. And I'm sure that, I mean, one, you know, $100,000 yeah. uh, account is still good, you know? Right. Especially because most of it you'll be doing it. It's easy for you to handle that, right? I mean, you could do it overnight. I think it was just about the job creation side and so on. And the, the, there's ample of time that you have now to a certain degree. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff, I mean, the advantage we have now is that we've learned lessons through building the solutions. So mm -hmm. we can build them better a second time around. I mean, in fact, Namak, what is like almost, the app is almost three years old. And we're, we're proposing to kind of update and rebuild the app because the platform it's on is um, 
is basically getting sunset. So it's got to be mud right now. So did you did they approve it or not? not yet? No, it was just we just gave him a list of potential programs, mm -hmm. um, and we wanted we strongly suggested to him to get to do a mix of um, client facing ones and kind of infrastructure ones. Um, the admin console for uh, basically the CMS that supports the mobile apps. I mean the mobile story application. I mean that thing is it's easily four years old. Um, hmm. We updated the APIs we linked to have been updated. There's additional information that's accessible from the mock. wasn't accessible before. Um, the, as I said, the version of uh, the JavaScript framework Angular that we used is no longer supported. So, when are you going to hear from them? And in the next next week or so, Adam said. I mean, the problem was when they all worked in the office. It usually two, when he said a week, it was two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, now that he's home, I don't know. <laughs> translation of a week is. I don't know if they're more efficient because they're at home or, or if they're less efficient. But and then I also I also saw today how both DC and Virginia extended the stay at home order. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and end of April, uh, beginning May, uh, I think. No, they both pushed them to May. Yeah, but you know they 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 have oh they've always had May into the, the ball game. Um, but most likely because of the push that Trump is doing that everybody covered themselves like wearing like a burqa and stuff and walk around like looking like zombies. I don't give a damn, but let them go out and work and labor and make the, the economy. They start shooting black people because we have masks on. I know, you know, this is a funny thing is that we've been demonizing every, you know, every time people used to wear masks or the hijab or the, yes. but yeah, now everybody has to wear it, you know, that's, <laughs> All the people can just keep doing what they were doing before. They're good. That's right. I don't understand why people, you know, I just, I just laugh about the society. I mean, it's just a bunch of, it's like a bunch of monkeys on a tree, man. That's what I call it. But yeah, no, let's get started because I want us to talk about your frustrations to a certain degree, because I'm sure the, the frustrations that you, sh that you echo are the same as many uh, small businesses. So are you going to record it or am I supposed to record it? It's already recording right now. I'll just cut it. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so this is, uh, hello, Aaron. Oh, oh uh, hell, this is, uh, I don't even know which one. Entry Talks 4. Uh, you've done a couple of them that you've done uh, for four minutes each, but um, the regular programming as in Entry Talks, this one should have been a number four. This is, uh, I'm looking right now on the website. This would be, for the long ones, this would be 18. No, a season two. Oh, yeah. Number four, right? Or yeah, number four because we've done one, two, three. Because we've done uh, this is the f supposed to be the fourth time. So uh, okay, let's see. View public site. This is oh, in the public site they don't even break them down by season. So I'm gonna trust you. This is season two, episode four. Yeah, because you've done smaller bits of four minutes uh, each throughout uh, the last couple of yeah, but this is weeks. The, this is the serious stuff. Yeah. So, um, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Yes. So, uh, now we are doing this virtually. This is the first time we're doing this virtually. And so, uh, hopefully we'll do some more sometimes as such. So to continue the momentum, we can probably do them, uh, the same space, just so long as six feet apart. And <laughs> <really hard>. <laughs> <laughs> so we can the far end of the table and record them with our masks on. And still yeah. being um, socially conscious and being socially distant. Indeed, you know how they've, uh, they've coined a new word, which is physical distancing, but socially connecting. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 it's crazy. So um, just let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, as a small business owner, uh, and especially having an ecosystem uh, where you actually uh, invite people to come sit and really share their knowledge, work in your physical space, uh, host events, attend events. How have you been dealing with the, with the coronavirus crisis, given the fact that many places have shut down and there is really no activity for events? So share with us a little bit of your experience with that. So the, the, as, as uh, folks who follow us know, we're, we're in our third year at IM3, and the experience that we found and the lessons that we learned was that events um, and the gathering of people in the physical space 
uh, was the foundation for everything else that we did. Mm-hmm. Um, the our target audience was in search, or still probably still is in search of a community to be part of, um, a community to contribute to, a community to find support from, and that's the path that we were on. And um, as I said in the uh, the last uh, podcast we did, you know, we were starting to turn the corner. We were getting a tremendous amount of um, uh, increase in the leads for events, for individuals to rent the space, for programming. We were starting to get a lot more traction on social media. And on our mailing list, we were getting more clicks. And so we, we had started to turn that corner where we were a brand that people were familiar with. Um, they started to understand what we were about. And, um, you know, that was the community, with, that was like the backstop of everything. The strong community support everything else. Um, that has changed. Without events, it uh, becomes a challenge to build our mailing list, and the mailing list is what generated the leads for all of the the programs and the services, um, and and then also for us to send out the newsletters too to kind of inform people what we're about. So we need to now transition to a new business model that uh, we had accounted for previously, but um, weren't planning on transitioning to quite so early. So given your technology background, have you been able to somewhat integrate quickly the technology side? So give us a little bit of your your pivot or your quick integration of technology and especially with future written in code because you were providing those classes uh, already. And so you had to move the classes from a physical space to the online space. Right, so we we, um, have been running our features written in code um, their technology training program, um, which was originally uh, location-based. People would come to IN3, we would teach, uh, we'd lecture, we'd have office hours, we kind of help people work through their program, um, through their challenges in the um, software that they were working on or whatever language they were learning. Um, transitioning it to online creates a whole different set of experiences. You mm-hmm. don't have the kind of one, it's a lot, more, it's more challenging to have the one-on-one interaction Um, with the class participants. Um, For those who understand coding, it's a lot harder to kind of pair code um, with someone to look at the problem with them and kind of work through the issues. Uh, But we still have the content and we're still generating new content that um, we just need to start to push to different channels now. So we need to take the same content that we were using. Um, I've started to um, work on an ebook now based on the Vue.js course that we spoke that we did. I have some recorded content from it. I have um, some YouTube videos that we've already posted that are associated with it. And so the idea is to, you know, start to make that transition online a lot quicker than we had initially planned. We'll do the same. The plan is to do the same with the Grow and Glow workshops that we're running. We have another gaming workshop that we need to run. And then we finally have uh, our uh, in three labs that uh, we need to run. The I think the advantage that we have is because, as you stated, Clearly Innovative is a technology-based company. I think that's a lot easier for us to transition to tech because we are a tech organization. I think that because we're used to kind of working in this iterative sprint model that we can quickly try things and adjust based on how they work out because it's just it's just how we've always have done things. Um, I think the I think the bigger challenge overall is there's a difference between the social media experience that individuals have online Mm -hmm. and the online experience when it's about how do I eat and how do I, you know, take care of my family. It's, it's, it's a lot different than look at my new shoes or my fingernails or my hair cut. I mean, it's, it's a different thing now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's a different reality. Definitely. And And I think that, you know, I'm still, I still look at stuff on Instagram and like people are posting pictures of, you know, you know, the, the glamour shots and all this other stuff, like, like, is that really what's going to get you through this, you know, from a business perspective, right? I'm going to want to hire you for your business because you look good in that outfit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> is that where we are now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, it's good. It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I saw a post on Instagram today and some guy said, stop looking at all these get rich quick schemes and pick one and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's time to focus. Yes. Yes. You know, it's funny because uh, a lot of the, uh, I watch Shark Tank. I'm I'm an enthusiast of Shark Tank. And one of the great things that they, I've heard a couple of them say is that there is no um, leap 
toward to success. You know, everybody has to climb the ladder of success. Um, some may, you know, having a Shark Tank uh, partner or an investor, obviously, you get, you can kind of climb quicker. You have a better support to, to climb up. But reality is it's hard, hard work and a lot of grit and a lot of thinking of bandwidth, your brain bandwidth. And so I go back and talk about, you know, as a small business owner, especially that as, as we were talking earlier, the first, the first question of, of the, the, this uh, talk was the space. The, you're, you're, one of your, the actual model is to have a physical space, having entrepreneurs come and do their workshop, you know, participants and so on and so forth. So now that you've been able to pivot, you know, we talked about this earlier, is what is the reality of others who are not like you, right? Uh, because you have a technology background, you know, I always tell, tell you that you can code overnight a whole app and, you know, and I don't even think that you would look tired after coding for hours. So technically uh, thinking about the 70 some odd ecosystems that are, or, or incubators or co-working spaces that are minority owned, that don't have a tech background, that don't, are not tech enabled. What, did, what would you say one to them in terms of how, because obviously and I don't believe that they're the ones, you know, snapping them shut in the glamour, glamour uh, dress or nails or cars. But they are mostly those ones that are saying, oh, my God, you know, our communities are going to be affected because I don't have money to pay rent because my members can't attend and so on and so forth. So what would be your, your, your uh, thoughts about that? Well, my first thought is the same challenge that, you know, when we speak to entrepreneurs currently. And, you know, one of the things I've always said is it's like, I think the expression is, why are you trying to teach someone how to be a chef when they're still hungry? Mm, mm. And I think we're back to that now, right? So before, you know, as you stated, you know, from the reports, you're like 70 something black owned and operated spaces uh, focused specifically on, um, you know, people of color and entrepreneurs. And they were all struggling before, right? We all have been struggling um, to find funding, to find support. Um, to, to get enough critical mass to justify our existence. And now most of us are just trying to figure out, you know, forget about our members. It's like, how do we survive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do we get to the other side um, so then we can start to support the ecosystem all over again? And, you know, our strategy is clearly to, to move on. Our strategy is to take the um, Intervene Nation software that we started working on before, which allows us to create an online uh, community um, of our members um, and figure out how we can spin that up quicker. You mm -hmm. know, figure out how do we take the content that we are generating from our programming that we have now and also from our programming library, from the summer camps that we did for kids, from some of the courses that we ran last year, um, and you know, potentially from some of our other partners that could be put on our online platform and uh, pushed out to support entrepreneurs. Um, either through our own memberships or, you know, once we kind of get most of the kinks out, figure out a strategy of how is it an offering that we can present to some of the other ecosystem builders who share a similar mission as we do. The, um, good, because, you know, um, how do you see, so the, before I ask this question, let me ask the, the, the other side of the question is, is the um, funding, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, you don't get the local funding, you don't have a state funding or depending on where you are, and you don't have federal funding, right? And um, we talked about the wonderful stimulus that has been uh, um, approved and being dispensed. How has, um, uh, have you applied? And if you have applied, what's the process and what, what have you thought? Is it something that anyone can do? And uh, what is the response thus far? Well, I mean, my 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 overall opinion is that it it's a it's it's it was flawed from the start to assume that the same banks that currently don't support small businesses and currently make it difficult for small businesses especially minority owned businesses to get loans why would anyone think that it's magically going to change now and i think that when this is all said and done and the postmortem is done and we look at the data you're gonna see that the same people who didn't get the loans before aren't getting the loans now. Mm. Um, we've applied for our loans, we have not heard back. We've heard from our bank, which is don't worry, it will be okay. 
Uh, but you see in the paper that they're saying the most of the money will run out by the close of business today. Um, we have not heard anything back from our bank. Um, most of the other banks will only take applications from clients. You know that <laughs> black and brown folks are under bank. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So yeah. go get money from a bank that wouldn't give you a loan before. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and you think that suddenly things are going to be different now. I mean, it's going to be a bloodbath, to be honest with you. I think that it's going to be really, really bad. I mean, it, it, I mean, I try not to think about it. That's how bad I think it's going to be. <laughs> right. From a, from a positive note, like the meaning in terms of, <laughs> you know, how like the optimism and all I, that. I can be optimistic yeah. about it, but I mean, uh, I, I think, I think part of the problem is that we're too often we're optimistic and we're not being realistic. Yeah, right? that's what I was going to pivot to is that the realistic in you, what would it say? Right. Yeah. But, so, so here's what, here's what I think will happen, right? So I am blessed that I have a COO slash CFO who has a finance background, who is very quickly able to pull, pull together. First of all, there's two things. A, reading through the documentation to understand what the requirements are. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, she was able to read through them, understand them, pull together the forms because we had the proper infrastructure in place to make sure that we could pull together all those documents very quickly. Right. So like that's a level that you need to be at just to get in the game. Mm -hmm. And so first you have to ask like how many of these small owned businesses out there can just say, oh, let me pull those out of my files or, oh, I know where to get all this information and then easily apply. Like you can't go to your bank and say, hey, help me. Right. Right. <laughs> so, They're close shop, yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's it's it, it, you know it's it's there wasn't a lot of thought put into how do you address the folks that are at the fringes. Mm. Is where we always are. We're always at the fringes. But okay, so let 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 let's. That's a very good point because you know at the end of the day, I, this is something that I think we've uh, we've discussed a lot, right? Because minority-owned businesses are always in the fringes. They're the last mile. Um, they're the more, they're the first one in, in line that that are affected in, affected by many uh, incidents of life. Um, but what does it teach us? Right? It teaches us that they're not utilizing technology because you're more efficient today because, yes, you do have uh, a CFO that is extremely capable and has been doing her due diligence and so on and so forth. But it's also because you've been utilizing technology to ensure that there's a reporting and so on and so forth. Right. So in terms of, of small businesses, especially you being a technologist, you being you know, a techn technology company owner, one of the things, even uh, while we uh, were providing some of the workshops, we've noticed that a lot of companies, a lot of people don't utilize technology, right? Yeah. So what does it tell you? It, it um, tells you that, you know, the thing that I've said before is, you know, people always say the tech industry, the tech industry, I believe tech is so pervasive that it, it's hard to say, to see the separation between what the tech industry is and what kind of industry is in general. I mm -hmm. think that, the, the haves and the have-nots will be become clear. It'll be based on who are the people that have, A, in the past leveraged technology to their advantage, and B, can pivot to start to leverage it to their advantage so that they can get through this successfully. Um, you know, people struggling to figure out how to get on Zoom or Meet or Hangout to have a, a conference call or to do a meeting or to do a presentation, I mean, things are gonna be bad for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. Out. Um, yeah. You know, how are you going to convince a client or someone to kind of do work with you if you can't communicate with them effectively? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so if your um, experience with, uh, if you had to refer other small businesses on how to go about the uh, wonderful SBA loan, what would it be? Um, it would be find someone who can support you with it. I mean, this is, I mean, this is one of the times when it's like, where are the uh, the local small businesses organizations? Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this this is when they should be shining. Right? Mm -hmm. This is when you should be seeing all over social media in every place. Here, call us for support. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. schedule an office hour so we can kind of help you with the process. Mm -hmm. right? This is when you start to. Um, this is when you start to basically earn your keep, right? 
Right. Like it's right. something that we spoke about internally, like how can we set up to do that? But we gotta like we need to get ourselves straight first. Right. Right. Yes. 100%. You know, we can start to figure out how to help other people. So yeah. our goal is, you know, once we get our stuff straight and we don't have to worry about how we can survive, then we can start to figure out some of the best practices of what we learned and how can we kind of share them with others. Mm-hmm. Internally, I, I, I spoke with Denise about that. I'm like, hey, Denise, you understand this stuff. We need to figure out how to start creating some documentation that we can kind of push out to our members and to other folks and kind of things that they need to look out for. I mean, at, at a minimum, we can do a postmortem when this is over and kind of talk about the lessons learned, what could we have done better and what things small businesses can do in preparation for the next round, because you know people are saying there'll be a next round. But mm-hmm. even today, you know, we were going through the paperwork because we're trying to find other banks to apply to since our bank hasn't responded to us, and they changed the rules, right? So oh, we, what do you mean? They 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 added additional requirements for documentation um, for your loan that wasn't there when they started the program last week. Hmm. Oh, how interesting! I didn't hear about that. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yes. So more requirements. Okay. More requirements. Yes. That becomes uh, more hurdles for small that businesses than we small businesses, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. But um, it is, it is uh, definitely. <laughs> it must be positive for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 because I was going to, you know, say, you know, there's uh, some opportunities that lay ahead. There right? are definitely some opportunities. I, I think the other thing that's, that's uh, interesting is, and I saw someone tweet about it today. This is a great opportunity for all the people with the shitty ideas to let go to shitty ideas and try again. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very also, true. Like the, your your idea that wasn't going anywhere before, mm-hmm. you know, you now have time to step back and reflect and say, right, why wasn't it going anywhere? What lessons can I learn and what else can I do? Mm-hmm. Right. It, um, yeah. I think that that there's an opportunity for the entrepreneurs who are able to look beyond this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and start to say what does the world look like when this is over and how do I position myself to take advantage of that world yes you know yes. like that's what we're trying to do now is saying you know so for me without a doubt um it's now all about the brand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so like, we are pushing the, our futures written in code, our growing glow, our entry labs um, as, as a brand so that people, when they're looking for services and they, it's not about, it's no longer about, hey, how do I get over to Georgia Avenue and go to IN3? Right. It, 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 it's gonna be a while before that's mm-hmm. what it's about. Yeah. Um, and you know, what's the cool, where's the cool spot to hang out? I mean, I don't want to shit on WeWork because you don't want to kick someone right down, but, you know, mm-hmm. WeWork's whole brand was about the physical location. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, they got a lot of shit to figure out. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Especially since their uh, investor pulled out. Yeah, the investor pulled mm-hmm. out, they're having problems, you know, paying their rent, and they're, ha- you know, I don't, like it's going to be a while for people want to come and sit in the co-working space next to some stranger. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And so if that's what you were about, like if that's, if that was your offering, then you have a problem and you mm. need to figure out something new Yeah. and, and figure, and, and for them, in my opinion, that was their brand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that world has come and gone. So they need to pivot to something new. Yeah, and, and so it, it uh, falls in line with what I think we've been talking about for a year. And if anybody has listened to you in three talks for the last year, is uh, the virtual world, the digital world, the online world. So online education, you know, there's an interesting book called The Global Wars on Jobs, which is saying that all undergrad degrees by 20, between 20 and 2025 20, and onward, it will be online. And today, most of the schools are providing everything online. One of the things that you have uh, been they're able trying to. Yes, they're trying to. They're struggling because they never really were on the pulse, right? If, if a place like N3 has been able to develop on a better, at the better level, the N3 Grow app, which is an education uh, platform, that, and now even earlier we were talking, is that there's an urgency to, to, to hone it, to, to, to make sure that it's refined enough for, for the launch. Um, 
because you see the need and uh, the underserved community, especially the highly potential people, they, they are not going to have the, 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 the tools that are necessary to thrive in the 21st century because it is a digital world. And so uh, one of the things that we talked about uh, throughout the year is how everybody has to develop their talent online. And so there was an article that I read and I sent it to you. To, I hope, that, and we're going to talk about this, which is how talent is still needed for growing list of remote work for performers from promos, testimonials to video games, web series, and voiceover work, right? Mm -hmm. Something that uh, it's not just a game, future written in code is all about. So I want you to talk to us a little bit now, um, especially because you are developing a gaming uh, uh, app. Um, so talk to us one about the gaming world, the virtual world. I know you've been sending me some articles about uh, a lot of the sports going online. So let's, let's talk about that because that's an opportunity, right? Yeah. Because in three may not have the physical location, but in the virtual world, you're already launched. You so, don't, you know. So, so we are, we had, um, had started working a, a lot of the, the funny thing is a lot of these things were what we saw ha as like first quarter next year goals that we were striving toward in regards to our online platform. So the in three nation application our online kind of, um, membership education platform that we had started working on you know we were our goal was like it was a background task that we would work on we our goal was to hopefully you know first quarter next year we'd start to launch it get some people on it no real rush right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the same thing with our, our social gaming platform you know we were like all right we can build this and we'll slowly pilot it with our kind of in-house stuff and eventually we'll move it online so we saw the future coming. We just didn't think it was going to come as quickly as it has. Right. right. So now the question is, you know, how do we reallocate resources appropriately to get those platforms up and, up and running and start to pilot them and get them productive and then figure out a way to kind of, you know, make money on that. Mm -hmm. So the basic idea is that um, even before the lockdown, there was a lot of social ac activity and relationship building and a lot of things going on, um, specifically in, in gaming ecosystems. Um, people looked for uh, individuals that shared a common interest with them in games. They would like to play the games together, chat together, share stories, photos, screenshots, and everything about um, their time on this platform with that group of people. And so um, we're, we're building a social gaming platform that can support that through um, leagues, um, tournaments and matches uh, as part of our uh, in three it's not just a game and then as you mentioned before our uh, growing global platform which has been kind of working we just haven't really put a lot of effort behind it because it, you know our our business model was about three physical locations mm -hmm. and strategies for generating revenue based on bringing people through the front door mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah oh. yeah, yeah. Not, not it's not good, but we'll talk about that. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pending. It's a challenging <laughs> business proposition to mm -hmm. present to a potential investor in this climate. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Right. Clearly. Yeah. That, maybe that's a better way to put it. <laughs> I think that there's more interest in uh, platforms that can um, reach potential customers based on the current environment. Mm -hmm. based on where people's minds will be in the future. I mean, they're talking about, you know, not having, I think Microsoft said they're not going to do any of their, any of their developer conferences until 2021. Like, they're, yeah. not um, yeah. they're talking about concerts and stuff that happened until 2021. Yeah. Right? So it's like, how do we, how do we still reach customers, um, build brand awareness, um, and figure out strategies to generate revenue based on that model? And so that's where we think our online platforms will come from. Uh, you know, the, as you mentioned, a lot of the sports have moved online. NASCAR got over a million people watching, you know, guys racing in the virtual world. Um, the NBA 2K is doing something with the NBA. Um, you know, video games are, you know, esports have now kind of moved to the forefront. Uh, the folks that used to sit in the dark in the basement and play games are now in high demand to figure out how can they reach other people. Mm -hmm. um, and the brands will be very quickly right behind. Mm. Um, because that's where the money is and that's how you can get access to individuals at this point. 
And so, and it goes back to what you've been saying about the esports world, the gaming world, which you've introduced me to it. You know, uh, I used to play Nintendo 25 years ago when <laughs> at the Atari, <laughs> but it, I didn't even know like in 21st century, this many people used to play until like, hey man, look at the numbers. And I went to look at the business number. I'm like, oh my God, this is unbelievable, right? And so, but what, you, what I want us to, to really, I mean, this is an opportunity, right? Because many people are saying that there is no, there aren't any opportunities in terms of the usual retail and so on and so forth because you can't have the physical, uh, you have that the physical distancing, but the online world, the gaming world, is making money. It's, it's the world is making money. Um, so I, I think there's opportunities in the gaming space. Mm -hmm. I think there's. I think the question is, how do you look at what your, what your strength is, what your core competency is, and how does it fit in this online world? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, before that's what they said to all the retailers, you know, you need to get online, you need to get online. And so everyone said, all right, let me build an e-commerce store for you. So everyone uh -huh. got there. Now we need to move beyond that. Like right. what's the next step beyond that? So for example, you know, it's great to have a storefront, but you know, people still want that personal experience, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do I have that same experience as I would have of walking in a store and talking to someone to get information about a product um, online, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, if you have the money and I run a small retail shop, how, how do I, for lack of a better word, do the equivalent of office hours for my shoppers, right? All right. All right. So my shoppers can come and state that they're interested in this product, that product, or whatever, and schedule the time to have a conversation. So those type of personalized services that used to only be available to those who can afford a personal shopper or afford mm -hmm. that one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. almost become a way of survival now, right? right. Even right. if you don't do it as one-on-one, -on -one, you can do online gatherings where you want to say, hey, at this time, we're going to talk about these products. Mm -hmm. So it starts to kind of create that relationship uh, kind of creates a drive and creates kind of like something that people can put on their calendar and say, hey, here's a time I could come connect to this brand. And mm -hmm. So it's like stepping back and thinking about things like that. Yes. And so, if, you know, there are two legs of what you said uh, that I want to touch upon. One is the consumer base of today is mainly, you know, the, what the, the at least the market trends say is that there is a millennia generation, right? The millennia generation uh, even uh, younger than millennia generation. And you were telling me about this game that I have no clue about, but uh, they were buying coins or something yeah, like Animal that. Crossing. Buying product, Animal Crossing and buying stuff and producing. So there's a whole world, a virtual world, where they're actually right now monetizing on, right? Yeah. That's one leg. The second part is the the intimacy that is being created is uh, as a retailer or whatever vendor that you are is the community part, which was the, our last uh, discussion is what you were talking about was um, how do you build a community? Oh. You know, it's really community impact com because your, co your customers become your community and the way you build a community is through information, love, interconnectivity and so on, inter interaction. And so I want you to talk about one is that whole uh, animal walking, crossing animal, yeah, animal that, game, that, that thing. Um, the the <laughs> last point though on what you said is, is, that is kind of going back to the brand is that the community becomes your brand ambassador. That's right. That's, That's how right. it continues to grow. And mm -hmm. so you need to look beyond just the transactional, hey, I got you to buy something from me next. It's like, how can I build a better relationship with you so that you can share that experience, because once again, experiences with others, so that they want to come and and have that similar experience with me as a uh, service provider. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, it's it's funny that you did mention Animal Crossing. I don't know that much about it, other than a lot of people are playing it. Mm -hmm. But the the interesting thing is, it's a it's a virtual world that people have kind of just latched onto as a way to kind of escape from their everyday world. Um, making new relationships, um, running businesses, actually buying and selling items. But the interesting thing about it is like, as a business owner, it's something that you should be aware of. It's like people are spending hours in a virtual world, building relationships with complete strangers, buying and selling goods, with complete, I mean, although they're virtual, with complete strangers, 
and building relationships, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, so the question should be like, how do I learn from that experience and translate it from virtual goods and virtual relationships and virtual transactions into something that can be sustainable for my business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It goes back to what I said before is that everyone just to, you know, not everyone, a lot of people looked at what was happening in video games, what was happening to esports is like, they, they couldn't see the connection to reality. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, I think they need to start paying attention. <laughs> I mean, I think they will start paying attention now. Um, I, w I saw on YouTube the other day, um, two professional baseball players playing um, um, a video simulation of baseball. Oh, and interesting. I was getting thousands of views. And, and, what, they, and what they're doing is, and, and, it's, and it's, it's great because they're, they're building personal relationships with the fans in ways that they never could have engaged with before. Mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it literally is two guys, like we are right now on a Zoom, but mm -hmm. two guys playing a video game and talking with each other about the game and their experience and life and just everything. And like thousands of people are watching this. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> yes. Interesting. Interesting. I, I guarantee you, in a couple of weeks, you will start seeing sponsors on these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, people will figure out how do I monetize this stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's it, it, it's mind boggling. But you know, one one last note because I think we're running long. It's it's mind boggling what people will watch. So, like, I think you. I told you, I, I posted this video, watch me code. Mm -hmm. um, it was like 20 minutes of nothing but me coding something. And I did not speak once in the whole thing. Yes, I right? remember that. Yeah. that, that you know, like people pay me like, how come you're not talking? <laughs> <laughs> and um, that video got over 300 views in 24 hours. Mm. How interesting. I can't believe somebody watched for 20 minutes in silence. It reminds you of the silent movies. Right? When I look at the static, when I look at the, uh, the statistics on YouTube, actually, I'm okay. looking at it right now. I posted, where is it? I posted it on April 8th. There's been 310 views. I posted another video on the 10th. It's got 461 views. These are just of me coding. In silence. No, the one, the one with 461 views, I'm talking in that one. Okay. The, the silent one is kind of leveled out. It kind of peaked the first day and it's kind of leveled out, but the one with me talking is kind of doing a little bit better. And they're averaging only about 10 to 15% of people get all the way through the video. Mm -hmm. Like it's really high for like the first minute or two and then it drops. But it's just still amazing that, and I, and I think that if you're not generating video content right now, you're a fool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, the interesting thing, and I've seen it is, because a lot of the videos that I generate, there's an associated blog post that goes along with them. Mm -hmm. The people are lazy. People want to watch stuff. They don't want to read stuff. That's right. That's right. The video stuff will live on for way longer than the print stuff will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Unquestionably, um, it's uh, it's interesting that the and I also saw the other day this company now has allowed you to take your kind of pre-roll of your YouTube videos and connect them to your Instagram page. And oh, interesting. Drive, yes, and drive you from your Instagram page back to your YouTube channel, which didn't exist before. Oh, how interesting. So they're becoming more interconnected amongst uh, the social media platform, the video platform, the yes, video the content video platform. platform. Becoming more and more interconnected. So as, as we're concluding, um, I want to ask one question. I don't think a lot of people ask uh, small business owners. How are you doing? I mean, I think, I mean, to be, to be extremely honest with you, there's days that I have, you want to know what it comes down to is um, it's you, you don't know what you should be doing. Mm. Right. And so you're trying to do everything and seeing what sticks like, because you don't, you don't know, like mm. you, you don't know when it's going to end. Um, you don't know how long you can go for. Right. Um, that's, and, and, and I mean that from both like the business perspective, but also kind of just a mental perspective, like, um, it's, and it's the things that you didn't think were that important are important to you that you missed. So like one, I know you used to always argue with me because <laughs> I would like randomly talk to people that came into IM3, 
my engagement with the entrepreneurs to so just listen to their problems, try to give them some advice. And you're like, look, you need to focus on your stuff. You can't help everybody. Like I miss that engagement right now. Mm. Right. There was a lot of, um, a lot of uh, emotional energy that I drew from those interactions, mm -hmm. um, which I, it, I don't get the same vibe, even teaching online. It's just not the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you, the, the, and I think that's going to be adjustment for a lot of people, kind of the, the emotional response you get to seeing the excitement in someone's eyes or the disappointment or just all of those emotions that you get from interacting with someone, especially an entrepreneur who's really passionate about what they do. I didn't realize how much it fed me yeah. until now. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't get that anymore. Um, the... And then the other thing is you just wonder, like, can I make it? In what sense? Like, yeah, I know that I, I mean, I know that I'll be okay, you mm -hmm. know, but like, can something that I've, like, clearly innovative, IN3 is like the last 10, 12 years of my life. Yeah. yeah. You know, IN3 has been like four years of my life that I focus on this space, um, you know, sacrificed to a great extent, clearly innovative all my other projects, all to try to make this thing work. And um, and the frustrating thing will be like, if it failed because of me, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I hear you, I hear you, right? yeah. Because I could say, yeah. it, and yeah. then I could step back and say, well, here's the lessons learned, here's something you might've done differently and kind of take those lessons and move on to the next challenge. But like, if it fails now because of this thing, yeah. like, you just don't know, mm. right? Mm. And then it's like, where do you go next? Like, what do you do next? Right? Mm. So, um, well, that's it's just a family. It's like, I got, as you know, I got kids. Yeah. You know, I, I struggled to kind of deal with the homeschooling and then work and all the other stuff. And, you know, I, you know, we didn't even get to talk about this, but, you know, think about all the single parent household entrepreneurs. Mm. Yeah. Their kids at home. Yeah. They need to homeschool. Yeah. And, try and to still make them. Yeah. And still try to make money. Yeah. 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 It's definitely uh, a time for self-reflection. Self mm. uh, I do believe that, uh, you know, it's, and, and we'll talk it offline about this, but uh, I know that, uh, you know, as I always say that uh, nothing happens for a reason. Mm. Uh, as you, as you reminded me earlier as well, <laughs> that I say that a lot, but um, one of the things that I know uh, for sure is that this is the great opportunity because everything that you've done has been leading you up to here. Right. And the one thing that, especially because from a technology angle, right? Because I'm I'm amazed. You know, I call you the like the tech guru, like a developer guru who can code while you sleep. I mean, I say I call you that all the time. Um, one of the the all these projects that you've spoken about are the projects that need to manifest at the right time because somebody needs it right now, mm. right? Uh, from the gaming platform, uh, which is, it's not just a game from the education part, which is at the in three grow, um, the future written in code, which they are online classes. And technically, as you were telling me with the distance of the six, uh, six feet uh, of distancing, you can still have the entrepreneur discussion. You can walk around in the coffee shop right. or something right. or open up uh, in three once the, the store lockdown has uh, gone off. But um, this has been good. I think, you know, one of the, it's good that people talk about one, their personal, because Yes, the single mothers. Yes, the you know I, I saw one of your posts about you, even your daughter while you were doing the the schooling. Um, that she knows all the continents, but not all the states that they're not teaching them all the same. Right. So you know, yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting in terms of self reflection. You know, there's a, a universal code telling us that we should, whatever we've been putting in the back burner, should be on the front burner at this point in in this life. But um. Happy we talked about the SBA loan. Mm. The uh, we I'm happy that we talked about the e gaming and the esports because that's something that I know you're all into it, and that's something that I know we talked about to expand across the world, uh, especially in the emerging markets. So I do look forward to uh, working on that. Um, so as we conclude, Aaron, uh, how do people find you? Oh, so um, you can find me at Aaron K Saunders on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. 
you can find um, in three at in three DC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and then you can find um, my, all the technical content on YouTube. If you just search for futures written in code, you can find my YouTube channel, which has all my videos there. And yeah. then also, um, as I said, we're starting to take office hours. Um, I posted in our latest newsletter, send an email, uh, an email to info at IN3DC uh, with office hours in the subject, give a brief discussion of what you want to talk about and we'll get back to you and schedule an appointment. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ed. Thank, Thank you for making this time. Yep. Have a nice one. All right. I'm, uh, I'm... Yeah, good.